Hi, this is Kathy Davis. This next video that we're going to do is reconciling your payroll, especially for end of financial year in MYOB advanced people. The areas that we're going to look at is checking your postings between the payroll and through the general ledger. This will also incorporate your leave entitlements and provisions and your superannuation. All right, with our payroll. Now, there is a presumption that prior to this video, you have already put in place the reporting, the new reporting that's come in version 2020, and also added our improvements of the pivot and the ge generic inquiries that is also on a previous video with instructions on how to do it. We're going to set first our data. Our data we need to actually set for the pivot will be, I'm going to look at the full 12 months, July 19. Through to June 30. I'm going to do it for all my companies. and for everybody. So what I have here is everybody here, all their pay information. What we're trying to achieve is comparing a, a way that we can compare our general ledger with the payroll pay runs. And from there, we can break it down and find out where there's variances do adjustments to the actual pay runs, do any journaling, correcting entries if it's required, or doing any reclassifications of the general ledger. So if we take a look at what we can use to actually help us, we can look at these various reports here at the bottom. And we go, I'm going to concentrate more with the pay activity detail data, the pivot table, and looking at the general ledger. All right, so here's that my data ready to go. I'm also going to now run the pivot over the data. And we're going to look at the general ledger one, because the general ledger one has the general ledger postings per pay run here at the top. I'm not going to worry about sub accounts because I'm not using sub accounts. What we can see here is that FBT has been posted. All right, so I've got my FBT entries here ready to go. I have my salary and wages accounts across the top. Let's do the big one. Salary and wages. We're expecting to see $901,000 worth of movement this financial year in this account here, the 600570. So I'll leave this pivot open. I'm going to click on finance and I want to use my account details because if there's a discrepancy, then I can actually look further with, with that. I'm going to open in a new tab. Set my range, which is from July 1 to 12. The account number was 600570. Okay, that is not 901. What could it be? Important to remember. I was looking across, my payroll is across all the companies. I did not specify it down to a specific company. If I put my branch in here, I will see straight away, if I look at Victoria, all right, here's 729. It's 
It's close. Some, oh, and we might have something that's actually part of Victoria in there as well. But the main thing is that I want to do is remove that 909. Mm. All right, so I had 901. So six, seven, eight thousand dollars difference. And that is showing here as well. All right, so what I can do with this is break it down. Now, if I take six months to December, 452, go back to my data and also break that back to being, last pay summary, wrong one, watch that, data. Bring this back also to December. And what should change this also to 19. All right, so here's my new data, my fresh data. And now I'll run my pivot again. I don't want my pay run in it. Oh, that's pay, I wanna go back here. That's better, okay. 4444. 4452. Four, four. I wonder what the difference is. All right, so there's something in there as well that's going to be actually still need to break it down further. The idea is that you keep breaking, narrowing down the data till you come up with what month it's actually going to be. So I take this now quarter by quarter. First quarter, view the data, same or different, break it down again. And then you might slowly work your way down to see what it is that is actually causing the discrepancy. I'm not gonna go all the way down in this case because I think that's not the best use of our time at the moment, but it certainly gives you an idea of how to break it down. You might want to actually do it branch by branch to see what it is that's causing the issue, variance. All right, so take a big chunk, break it down, break it down, break it down. All right. Leave. Two things we need to see. One is that we've got enough leave in our, in our provision account to match the leave that we currently have reporting in our leave entitlements reports within the payroll. Let's have a look. All right, we will come now to another report, which is also pivot. People. We have entitlement history. Set it for July 19 to June 30. Take out our people. Define my data. Come back, run the pivot. I'm not going to worry about pay run. I'm not going to worry about people at this point. Here is what I expect to see in my provision accounts. The value. It's important that you look at this via this dollar value because this dollar value is the line by line dollar value. All right, now, what sort of things could have an impact on what you expect to see as a value based on your own personal numbers of taking the leave of leave balance of a person and multiplying it by the annual salary. The thing that could happen is that your 
advanced will revalue your leave as it goes along. Advanced will also have some variations in what it's doing with moving um, between one anniversary year to the next anniversary year. So if we have a look at things that could impact uh, variances or, or put questions in your mind as to what it is, what's going on, what does this mean? Why is this entry here? If we take a look at some a pay, an entitlement for somebody, Let's pick Michael. It, is, it does take a while when it has to churn through a lot of data. And when you do this, always break it down per pay item. Don't try and actually look through it when you've got all the pay items together in one. So if I have a look at him now, number one, I'm not going to worry about his name. What I do want to see here is this reason column because this reason column here out on the right starts telling you the things that have been going on. Revaluations are at one set, no big deal, but if it was if it's a change of pay rate, it would be a lot larger. We look at the end. What do we see down here? There's been a manual adjustment to his pay, right? Four hours. It looks like it's already been reconciled and four hours has been added on to his pay. If you actually have a look at where it's been, the column that it's gone into, it's gone into this earned balance, not this accrual balance. The impact of that is that it won't cut off accruing for him when it reaches close to his anniversary year because this four hours might actually have an otherwise an impact and he would stop earning early. So the best bet always is this when you're adding adjustments, put them in as earned, not as accrued. But have a look, see what have we got? Adjustment, normal accrual adjustment. So there's been a few things that have been going along, but the reason is going to help you to actually identify what's going on. All right, we need to put an adjustment in. Let's have a look at how adjustments work. Entitlement adjustments. Pick the person you want to do the adjustment for. Pick the entitlement. Oh, this person doesn't have any entitlements. What this means is that he's more than likely a casual or a particular entitlement is no longer on his pay. Matthew. Okay, annual leave. When are we going to do this adjustment date? What date are we going to do it? Because it's an end of financial year adjustment, I'm going to put in end of financial year date. What am I going to do? Am I going to give him for a number of hours or am I taking away hours? If I want to take away hours, I'm going to put a minus amount and then I will multiply that by his hourly rate and put in the equivalent in dollars for his hourly rate times the amount you're doing the adjustment. All right, here's your tick box, accrual adjustments. And that's the box that I'm saying to leave it as it is and put, just put it all into earned and that way then you won't have any problems at the end when it gets close to his anniversary year. So this is taking out leave. If I take this minus off, right, that's adding leave. Save it. Done. Now, this value does not get posted to the general ledger. You will have to do a journal or or know that when you're reconciling the leave at the end of end of the month or end of the year, that there's going to be at least a discrepancy of $268, all right? So 
I tend to say if it's a big value, do your journal. That's between your leave expense and your leave provision. Or remember as you reconcile. All right. There's just some more information here about things that could be happening. And here's our data pivot that I spoke about. And also, if you're looking at values in the general ledger, you can also use your generic inquiry, pay activity generic inquiry, which we've looked at already. We've just had a look at doing the adjustments. And as I have highlighted here, just really be careful whether you're talking about days or hours that you're actually doing your leave in. Because eight hours and eight days makes a big difference in somebody's, <laughs> somebody's leave entitlements, as you can appreciate. Okay, reconciling super. I think the best thing we can do now is just quickly go to our pivot. Quickly go to our pivot that we've already been doing with our pay activity detail and have a look at that. Okay. Revisit the pivot. I've already got the data prepared here. When we actually have a look at this, super guarantee, 42,000. All right, so that's the super guarantee. That's the super expense account. I expect to see a movement of $42,000 for the period that I'm looking at. Okay, so from here, if you actually notice a discrepancy or something that you, doesn't look right, like, for instance, this casual overtime for 303.64, um, what you can do is then drill down onto that particular pay item and start looking at the people that are being paid by that pay item. So I can now set a filter, clear everything and just select that one pay item, pull in the name to see who it is. That's Belcher and have a look at the pay run number that I want to actually be honing in on. So that's 15, 1567 is the pay run number that I actually want to look at for this person. Let's go over to our Manage Pays, pull up that particular pay run. One more page. And find Joseph. Here we go. So let's see what we've got. All right, so I'm seeing here that he's got casual overtime plus he's got also uh, casual loading and this casual overtime here. I don't want this pay item on his pay because that was an error. So what we can do now is come into this particular uh, pay run to the person and reverse that. So let's go back to that. So we're coming back to our pay run highlighting the person, there he is, highlighted, and then this adjust pays actually comes available to use. Click on that, confirm the date you actually want to do this adjustment for, and seeing the physical payment date was the 31st of the 12th, that's what I'm going to continue to use. Click on OK, and what do we say here? Right, so what that looks like is, is it's moved out of that particular pay group. So let's try and see what we can do with this. Where does he belong now? He's in warehouse. All right. So I'm just going to add back operations for him and have a uh, and I 
put playwright in, save that. Okay. And we can try that again. Adjust pays. Check our date. All right, here he is. So we have it here. Now, what do we need to do with this pay? What we need to do with this pay is remove the overtime one and a half because I don't want that. So I'm just going to delete it and save. And I can go back a level and process it and complete it. And that's finished what needs to be done. So if we now have a look, we'll see that that, that particular one for, here's another pay run that's been open. And if we ha go back and have a look at that other pay run, 1567. Yeah, there's adjustments in there. And you can see now against Belcher, it says, yes, it's been adjusted. So that's a quick way of going now, the, having the ability now to go back and make an adjustment to a pay run. Be very careful in what you're doing because you're actually possibly changing the actual amount that somebody is being paid and that's going to impact on their final payment summary and what you have sent them as an amount. So I recommend that you actually also adjust the amount you're paying to match what it should be as well. But I just did this as a quick example of how to make a change if you need to by editing a pay run. So th thank you for listening to this portion and you can contact us on support at momentumss.com.au if you have any further queries with regards to this area that we've been looking at as far as reconciling.